logic is not good government's appointments are rarely on favoritism basis mostly they are on merit basis anyways good point the first point was private monopoly okay i want to listen from more people not no repetition from mangesh okay rashi ha huh. they will lose the government job but they will get the private job but they will be have they will be in the job <laughs> this is not a point the first point is good Se not second point hmm. you are going to the why are you taking why are you thinking that private sector is always a bad employer it's a good employer it rewards efficiency it do not protect an inefficient people like government so never ever think negative about private sector too much right we have a tendency to think only negative about the about the private sector okay i think uh, we have started the discussion uh, the purpose was to initiate the discussion right not to uh, complete the topic itself because anyways we are going to discuss the topic and uh, this topic of disinvestment is definitely you can say this is a current affair topic or this is a contemporary topic and definitely this is a fundamental topic starting from independence we have to discuss this topic right so we will be discussing it in a very in a very comprehensive manner we will discuss what was the status of uh, disinvestment on the eve of independence like uh, public sector enterprises and all why we set up the psus at all we have to start from there okay so when i'll be discussing this topic simultaneously two more topics will be covering number one psus in india number two uh, privatization right so disinvestment psus and privatization three topic we have to cover simultaneously right so why psus were set up then what were the problems faced by the psus in 1991 so we'll discuss that what are the meanings and categories of the disinvestment this might be relevant for introduction for prelims also right what is the purpose of disinvestment policies of the disinvestment then uh, budget initiatives dpm arguments for disinvestment arguments against disinvestment targets and actuals role of psus presently and the way forward right <coughs> finally we will conclude so number 1 on the eve of independence if you see we give the importance to psus right why because number 1 we adopted socialistic pattern of society and economy because we were poor economy the number of people who were poor were large they could not afford the things from the capitalist so we adopted socialistic pattern of society because of this socialistic pattern of society the primary role was given to the psus so we said state led capitalism the capital industries were put up by the state please keep writing the important points likhte rahiye ppt ka ppt aapko milega but ppt ka wait mat kijiye because ppt again you have to open make the notes so keep learning and keep writing also simultaneously right ne then we have the we had the mixed economy so public sector will provide the essential services and the basic and heavy industries and the private sector will provide whatever it can provide as per its capacity right we adopted centralized planning where all the planning the restrictions the rules regulations how much uh, has to be produced in a particular sector everything was fixed up in the in the centralized at the central level right and we focused on the self reliance we focused on the self reliance in the second fire plan we focused on mahalanobis model mahalanobis model says that we have to focus on the heavy industries capital goods industry which can provide the base for the uh, consumer goods industry so consumer goods industry can can be developed based upon the heavy industries so we provided the dominance to the psus right now what are the rational behind the psus so right we got this fundamental we had this fundamental we can use this in the introduction part right and mangesh you were using this lic ipo in the introduction so you are using the example but you have to give the argument along with the example what are you trying to say 
through that example like you can give you have to give the argument example has to be supportive only don't say that lic ip has come just you know, that will make no sense why what is the point that you are trying to make are you saying it is good bad or no what is the argument argument is to be focused right now what are the rationals like what are the different logic behind psu and please write these points because there can be a question about psu crisis there can be a question about psu reforms there can be a question about uh, government companies okay they will ask the same question in different format rather than asking the disinvestment topic they will ask why psus needed reforms and what are the reforms being carried out in the psus so disinvestment is the major reform being carried out in the psus so first we have to understand why psus were given the major role at the time of independence economic criteria job creation because we needed the jobs in plenty and psus they acted as a modal employer they will provide job security retirement benefits and the best amount of remuneration number 2 import substitution if we have to import if we have to substitute the import then we have to establish basic industries like steel power which can provide the base for the consumer goods industry so that we can replace the import right so for import substitution we needed basic industries and the capacity of the private sector was limited in that britishers time they did not allow the private sector to develop except few companies tata billa so their capacity was very very limited and because of that we could not rely on the private sector for development of the basic and heavy industries we have to give this role to the public companies right then why psus because if you see steel power they are providing the market for each other power power plants will be made from the steel and steel sector need the power or oil and gas in power uh, power sector we need the oil and gas and in oil and gas we need the power so they acted as a supplementary complementary partners like suppose if the government goes only for steel sector then it will need the power it is not available then steel sector cannot work similarly power similarly oil and gas similarly railways and other sectors so they established the whole spectrum of csus because there was a need of a complete ecosystem it was not a you know random strategy it was a very thought about very well thought about ecosystem which can support each other every company supporting each other providing the market to each other providing the input and output to each other right and finally only psus they can be given the budgetary support suppose a private company fails we cannot provide the budgetary support that private sector will collapse suppose a psu is working in the power sector now it is making the loss so the government can support through budgetary budget and this power sector is essential even if it is making losses like today also power distribution companies they are making losses but still why we are making them survive because this is part of the basic minimum needs now ab imagine kijiye ki electricity nahi hoga to kya hoga right so this is also one of the reason right political reasons it will help in the coordinated decisions like we have the planning system in the planning system we wanted to have the targets like job creation infrastructure creation goods creation so it will help the government as a whole for uh, in the coordinated decisions and a weak private sector as i have discussed at the political level we have to give the importance to the public sector because the private sector was weak right sorry hello positive point kaise hoga kaun sa yeah so we are talking about rational behind psus rational behind psus one of the rational is that private sector was weak right and social to tackle the regional imbalances especially the required regions like interior and remote areas interior and the remote areas 
there we have to establish the infrastructure we have to provide the jobs so if you see the plants of the PSUs they are mostly located in the remote areas right Bilai, Rihand and at multiple other places right now problems faced with the PSUs in the 1991 from 1950s till 1990s almost 40 years of journey and they were making losses big losses so what were the reasons can you tell huh? high fiscal de deficit was the outcome which crisis fuel no tell me the structural problems in the PSUs not the not the contemporary issues going on in 1991 we are discussing the topic of PSUs crisis not the 1991 crisis see you have to look into every aspect starting from the top management the top management was mostly the bureaucrats IS officers they are considered to be the solution to everything but the PSUs they have to be uh, they have to work on the special by the specialists suppose NTPC NTPC is a power sector company so it what is the day-to-day -day operation of the NTPC to convert the coal into electrical energy so day-to-day -day decision making the policy making that can best come from the person who has already worked more than 30 years 20 years in the company who has seen all the different phases starting from the what is happening at the ground level what is happening at the middle level what is happening at the top level so the professional management was missing the bureaucratic managed management could not fulfill the need of the professional management right number two the customers look into every aspect customers so PSUs the pricing policy and the decision and the uh, product making strategy that was driven by the government decisions by the social considerations so the profit making or uh, you know managing the cost that was their last priority the first priority was definitely what the first priority was to take care of the government decisions if government is saying okay you cannot give any product about this then suppose oil and gas company the government is deciding the price of the oil and gas in the advance only so even if the company is in loss then the company has to sell the diesel and pr petrol at a particular rate only. So the second thing is the pricing policy. Number three, the political interference in the decision making of the PSUs. So investment, the what should be the location of investment? It is driven by the political factors rather than the economic logic. For example, if a power plant has to be established then there should be some minimum conditions satisfied like there should be proper supply of water easy av availability of the raw material easy transformation of the uh, power output but it was set up in an area where none of these is available just to provide the job just to fulfill the election manifesto so because of this so many power plants they remain in losses right next what is the next point surplus manpower yes so because see you have to you know every point you have to see you have to tell the cause why surplus manpower was there and what was the impact don't just write surplus manpower you should write because of the modal employer obligation because PSUs they are supposed to be modal role employer why are you going to work in the PSUs everyone is looking to PSU because they are providing every facility even if your fund member is working in the PSU your life is settled your basic needs will be taken care of right so they are providing you every facility and because of that there is a extra burden on the uh, PSUs they cannot compete with the private sector private sector are hiring the people on the efficiency basis and they can remove the people also but here in the mo because of the modal employer they cannot remove the people easily right okay what else sorry yeah competitive speed was missing technological advancement 
right because psus were having the monopoly steel sector oil and gas power everything there is no competition so if there is no competition if you are given if you are given anything you will be the most lazy person in the in your work you will be a rule maker rather than fighting for the best right so because of lack of competition over protection it resulted into the poor efficiency right what else hmm? price control we have discussed so almost all the points we have discussed okay so problems faced by number one financial losses this was the outcome basically this was the outcome right this is important point which you should which you should write issue of white elephant this is the keyword what is the meaning of white elephant the delays the time and the cost overruns again because of the lack of competition there is no competition now you look into in the present time you look into the execution of the express ways national highways how fastly they are executed metro how fastly it is executed somehow because of the competition from the other sectors and because of the freedom in the pricing decision like metro is comparatively free in the pricing decision bureaucratic control excessive political interference surplus manpower low price recovery due to social burden over protection from the competition right so basically the major difficulty with the psus which was identified by the economists and other people was the lack of management autonomy because if you be if anyone become the minister prime minister they think the psus are their own property right so psus they were driven by the political considerations rather than the economic logic right hmm. think organically right different stakeholders of the psus different dimension of the psus not don't think fragile points फ्रेजाइल पॉइंट बहुत सोचते हैं आप लोग ये तो इट्स ए इट्स ए इंडस्ट्री वाइड इट्स प्राइवेट सेक्टर में भी होता है पब्लिक में भी होता है इट हैज नथिंग टू डू विद पब्लिक ओनली सो दिस इज सम ऑफ द फैक्ट नॉट इंपोर्टेंट एज ऑफ नाउ यस सो नाउ दिस इज इंपोर्टेंट द फैक्ट how much is the importance of psus right so psus they carry 20% of uh, they carry the weightage of 20% of gdp 20% of gdp and 15% of stock market capitalization please write the importance of psus the role of psus they have a significant role right over 10 lakh people are being employed by the psus so the top government job after the upsc is which one psu job right even they get salary better than upsc qualified people quality of life is very good actually i have been part of this that's why i know <laughs> and PSUs are both at the state level also and municipal level also. State level, you find so many PSUs working at very different level. One third of the PSUs are loss making. One third, okay. So, ऐसा नहीं है कि every government company is loss making. There are so many profit making companies also. NTPC, ONGC, all the Maharatna, they are profit making. That's why they are Maharatna. Right? Turnover is very very high and uh, the loss is something like this but not important no need to remember just remember this point 10 lakh people employed and one third is the one third of the psus are loss making just just three points are sufficient
now what is the meaning of disinvestment so disinvestment means selling or liquidating the shareholding of the government in the psu simple so selling of the investment so disinvestment investment sale the government is selling its investment sale of the investment is disinvestment government is selling its investment in the psus now what is the purpose number 1 because government's business is not to do the business so they want to get out of business of the production government entered into the business in 1950s because it was the best available of alternative it was not the choice rather it was the compulsion right number 2 it will focus it can focus the government can focus on the infrastructure like roads power plant and all education and healthcare so government want to get out of business that is why now we are saying that we will be there only in the strategic sectors and will no longer and we will not be there the government will not work in the non strategic sector we will come to that right we'll discuss about it next is strategic disinvestment what is the meaning of strategic disinvestment everyone yes so major criteria is transfer of the management control even if it is with less than 51% share also so 51% sale or less than 51% sale like major sale or minor sale but the management control is transferred so disinvestment can be of multiple type like disinvestment can be like sale of 5% shareholding 51% shareholding 100% shareholding so this is disinvestment if this investment along with transfer of management control to the private sector it happens then this is strategic disinvestment then we have 100% disinvestment this is what we call as privatization now so strategic disinvestment it it means uh, basically this is a term defined by the dipen department of investment and public asset management right so earlier this used to be this department of disinvestment the name of the government department which was responsible was department of disinvestment but now this is department of investment and public asset management so it reflects the change in the approach of the government how because earlier they were saying this department is working to sell the investment but now they are saying this department is working to manage the investment and the public asset because investment is a public asset it is a property of the government it is a asset of the government sampatti hai sarkar ki so usko manage karne ka humne kaam kiya hai we are managing out of which like one part of the comp, uh, one part of the management can be sale but sale is not the primary thing sale is not the primary thing so normally when we say disinvestment one one thing comes to our mind is sale because that is what traditionally disinvestment means but sale for what purpose that is changing the purpose of disinvestment is changing earlier it used to be for for getting out of crisis of 1991 then it used to be to just get the money in the crisis and now it is to reform the psus bring the efficiency and give the importance to the private sector remove the mentality that there is something called taken to be granted so it's not about it's no longer about 
which is good like private is good or public is good public is good in few sectors few few areas and private is good in other areas so it's not about that government can do can do or can't do but why should we get into a business which is no which which can be done by others better which can be done by private companies better there can be a sense of competition you can say you can look into uh, bsnl bsnl and the other telecom companies you can link into banking sector now people prefer to open the bank in the open their account in the private companies private sector and because of them even the psus they are reforming they are also changing their attitude earlier they used to act like i like they are the is officer waiting period favoritism corruption the loan giving but now everything is available on demand easily available so competition telecom banking every sector there is a competition which is providing the good quality of services at competitive prices increasing the efficient use of the national resources because ultimately our purpose is to best utilize the available national resources right so what is the meaning of this strategic disinvestment sale of substantial portion mostly mostly it is substantial portion mostly it is more than 51% but it can also be less than 51% it can be up to 50% also but mostly it is more than 51% and with the transfer of management control so substantial portion with the transfer of management control in your notes just you can just write these two words sale of substantial portion with the transfer of management control three categories we have discussed disinvestment is simple partial transfer strategic disinvestment 51% substantial and the management control and outright sale or privatization so outright sale is equal to privatization air india but they are privatizing going to privatize completely earlier it vsnl very in 1990s vsnl aapka tha purposes of disinvestment policy structural purposes number 1 to infuse the professional mismanage manage, uh, management basically so whatever problems were faced by the psus we will reverse we will try to avoid that problem so we will introduce professional management because when there is a private sector involvement they are also part of decision making so the political executive they cannot force beyond a level private sector can make them accountable right number 2 accountability because disinvestment do not only mean that shares will be given to some other private company or some one com one person it also means the shares will be given to the general public retail investors people like you and me we are investing in the public companies so there is a mechanism the companies have to report to the sebi to the stock exchange about their decision criteria about their performance how are they are doing earlier how are they are doing now so there is accountability to the public in general and the private sector earlier everything was not transparent but now there is lot of transparency more competition and better quality of goods and services example you can see banking products telecom products even in the transport sector more autonomy through the status like navratna maharatna miniratna this thing we will discuss separately in the prelims what is the meaning of navratna maharatna and miniratna so these are the companies psu companies who are having certain criteria fulfilled like they are earning the profit so wo kya hai wo they are the gems 
good performing companies who are earning the profit who are having some minimum level of turnover right and who are having some minimum level of net worth unka kuch worth hai apna right turnover hai worth hai aur profit making hai right so if they are fulfilling these three criteria we are providing them autonomy so based upon these three criteria we are identifying a company to be ratna or not number 1 number 2 if there is a if they are ratna any of these they have two advantages number 1 they get the freedom in the decision making decision making with respect to investment that how much investment they can do and where in where or what should be the criteria of investment so investment karne ka jo adhikar hai wo unko mil jata hai unka jo management hota hai directors hote hain it is no longer with the ministry only at their own level up to a certain amount they can do the investment number 2 they get the freedom in their hr policy human resource policy like how they will be recruiting they are no longer following the government rule only right they have to follow the reservation and all but they can recruit directly themselves going to the campus or through other thing because of this only these companies started coming into the campus getting the best talent right so autonomy to invest till particular level and autonomy with respect to hr rules economic logic versus public service logic so hum log job usko denge jo deserve karte hain based on the proper competition proper test at the company level एक्चुअली क्या है कि आप आप काफी एक आउटसाइडर पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू से देख रहे हो इनसाइडर पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू में वर्कफोर्स में काफी रिस्ट्रिक्शंस लग जाती हैं लाइक सैलरी कितना होगा प्रमोशन कैसे होगा किस क्राइटेरिया पे प्रमोशन होगा राइट right? सो so, वो सब चीजें बोनस कितना मिलेगा वो सब चीजें ज्यादा मैटर होती हैं इट्स नॉट ओनली अबाउट अपॉइंटमेंट अपॉइंटमेंट के बाद कैसे होगा उनका परफॉर्मेंस कैसे मैनेज होगा लाइक नाउ दे आर गेटिंग सम बेसिक सैलरी प्लस they are also getting the performance bonus so if you don't perform then you will not get the bonus so that is a kind of punishment you are getting which is not in the case of government employees aap ias officer ban jayenge aap se acha kaam kare bura kaam kare aapko same salary milne wala hai there is no concept of bonus but in psus there is a concept of performance bonus like in the private sector so these kind of policies are there so you are looking only from the perspective of appointment but after appointment there are lot of policies which have which are important to make them more competitive get best out of the available hr theek hai political issues political objectives the government want to focus on the non business aspect like education health okay and depoliticization of the essential services so essential services should be functioning on the economic logic economically it will reduce the subsidy burden like in case of air india air india is working in the government that means it will be providing the subsidy but working in the private sector it is no longer supposed to give the subsidy some of the timeline you can just remember this first one 1991 was the first major point when the we started we started given the 20% disinvestment limit okay and uh, later we expanded to uh, like initially they were sold only to domestic fis but later they were sold to others also not important for you in the mains only this much is important then in 1998 to 2000 we classified the psus into two parts one is working in the strategic sector 
strategy sector means which are strategically very important like defense railways atomic so in these sectors we did not allow the disinvestment other category of disinvestment was non strategic sector so here we allowed the disinvest in, in the phased manner so only in the non strategic sector we allowed the disinvestment in the phased manner so in this time maruti vsnl they were privatized Two thousand four, common minimum program. Here the focus was on reviving the PSUs, not to touch the profitable PSUs, right? So two thousand four, the focus was just to revive the six PSUs, because it, in this time, there were partners from the left parties also, so they were never never in favor of the sale of PSUs, right? So they were. selling the uh, selling the companies who were in losses 2005 we made national investment fund so 75% of the proceeds from the national investment fund that means uh, basically if any psu share is sold if any psu share is sold then it will go into the fund koi bhi share jo sell hoga uska paisa kahan jayega investment fund mein jayega from this fund 75% money will go to the social sector that means education health sanitation housing right and 25% money it will go to revive the sick psu usko revive karne ke liye usme wapas se capital capital dalne ke liye so that it can start working again principles in 2009 just understand this point principles which were laid down in 2009 of policy that public enterprises are the assets of public so public ownership should be enhanced what is the meaning of this that who are the owners of the psu government and government means the public at large so public enterprises are the assets of the public public at large so they should be the owner that means they should be given the ownership through retail investment so retail investment was allowed the retail investment was allowed that is why 20% of the shares who were sold they were kept exclusively for the retail investors 20% shares they were kept exclusively for the retail investors and again the, this government was the upa government only so they were retaining the majority and the management control in the strategic strategically important sector 
राइट सो लेट्स रिवाइज क्विकली 1991 में हमने क्या स्टार्ट किया पार्शियल इन्वेस्टमेंट 20 परसेंट राइट पार्शियल डिस इन्वेस्टमेंट में वी क्लासिफाइड द पी एस यूज इन टू स्ट्रेटेजिक एंड नॉन स्ट्रेटेजिक we started focusing upon the strategic sector that we will not disinvestment we will disinvest only on the non strategic sector right and then 2004 minimum common common minimum program only six psus they are allowed to be revived right not profitable and they also started national investment fund from where 75% money will go to the social sector after this 2021 we all know the air india 2009 policy that it belongs to the public so retail investors were allowed and retaining the majority without losing the management control of the strategically important sectors and strategic disinvestment of identified psus started with more than 51% 50% sale and transfer of management control 1617 this was the major change you can note this point 1617 investment based approach from disinvestment to investment what is the meaning of this earlier they were saying department of Dis disinvestment is there for sale of psu shares uska purpose kya hai ki hame apni shares ko offload karna hai kam karna hai but now they are saying no that is only one part of the management now it means the management of the assets jo hamari property hai jo shares hain jo psus hain they are the assets so now this department will be improving the efficiency of the psu not only through psu sale but also through other measures so sale is only one dimension right so government moved from disinvestment based approach to investment based approach to enhance the efficiency of the psu get more profit see we have to discuss this topic in detail so that in your interview or in your main answer you can give the proper logic not no, not the very fragile logic sir modi ji hain ye to piche pad gaye hain privatization ke theek hai to modi ji ki galti nahi hai ye to kitne samay se policy chal rahi hai aap dekhiye to 1991 we started then uh, common minimum program congress congress ke sath bhi us samay left parties thi warna congress bhi start kar deti <laughs> kya hi tha congress ne thodi ps uh, private sector ko dis, uh, discourage kiya hai ammani kiska banaya hua hai प्राइवेट सेक्टर के बिना तो काम चलेगा नहीं अब यहाँ पे अदानी बना दिए मोदी जी ने तो क्या हुआ ट्रांसफर ऑफ डी पी एम दिस आई हैव टोल्ड चेंज ऑफ डिपार्टमेंट फ्रॉम फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ डिसइनवेस्टमेंट टू डी पी एम राइट सो द करंट गवर्नमेंट इज परसुइंग डिस इन्वेस्टमेंट नॉट टू वैकेट द पब्लिक सेक्टर इट्स नॉट बिहाइंड कि हमें पब्लिक सेक्टर से अपने आप को खत्म करना है राधर टू एनहांस इट्स एफिशियंसी राइट कि सिंपल है देखिए गवर्नमेंट में मैंने भी काम किया है एक टेकन टू बी ग्रांटेड वाली फीलिंग आ जाती है गवर्नमेंट में अब मानिए मत मानिए आई एम नॉट सेंग दैट दे आर नॉट एफिशियंट दे आर मोस्ट एलिजिबल दे आर एफिशियंट दे आर वर्किंग दे आर बेस्ट बट मे बी दे आर नॉट सो मच कॉम्पिटेटिव दे आर नॉट सो मच कॉम्पिटेटिव एंड नाउ why it is required in the global context when we have to compete with other countries it's no longer about within india it's not emotional aspect when we have to compete in the export and import with the global countries with the countries like bangladesh who are which are providing the goods and services at a very low cost so everything has to be done like agar hum baat kare we are we are having the thriving service sector So in the service sector, which is which are the major sectors, IT, banking, and for them to survive and thrive, we need good manpower. We need good power itself, energy. Say here me, good infrastructure, good urban housing, because after some time the people will not will need housing also. पैसा लेक पैसा कमा के कहाँ लेके जाएंगे वो? Otherwise they will run to the outside India. So every facility need to be provided. at a competitive price when uh, when uh, uh, the foreign companies they are coming in the form of amazon and other like uh, your uber and all so we can't say that okay we will be operating on the old agenda of government working in the business and providing job security high salary only to few people
so to remain competitive in the global environment we have to follow the policy of private sector efficiency it's not about profit making psus are also profit making so what ongc is profit making ndpc is profit making profit making in itself is not a bad thing economic survey also says that to create to create uh, wealth is important wealth in itself is not a bad aspect in religious text also wealth is a good thing it gives prosperity it gives the freedom it gives the strength so wealth in itself is not a bad thing so don't say that why profit should be there public companies are also running the profit earning the profit so profit making in itself is not bad thing so private sector if it is doing good efficient providing all the objective then it is good that it is making the profit it is the drawing of the because the same profit can be further invested into the uh, in the form of infrastructure in the form of new companies which will create the jobs which will provide the income again which, which will give the demand more demand will be created so it will create a virtuous cycle of investment and growth right economic survey ne baat boli hai that investment public in, uh, private investment private wealth creation is not a bad thing if if reliance company is working then definitely it will do the investment investment karega to kisko fayda hoga local people through infrastructure through jobs right so new disinvestment mantra is minimum interference allow public sector undertaking to function on the commercial principles and grant the managerial autonomy right same thing in different words you can see yourself later on now ye sab chal raha hai aapka initiatives not required just for the sake of uh, your knowledge you can see L what is the meaning of listing here listing ka matlab kya hota hai basically a company is a closed company suppose lic even though this is owned by the government but it is not having any accountability accountability to the public at large it is not submitting its document to the uh, public at large so lic is listed what is the meaning of lic lic being listed that means now it will be like its shares they will be sold and purchased on the stock exchange and not only that the most important aspect is that it has to submit its documents so there will be transparency in the working of the company stock exchange will need some regular document ki aapne kis basis pe decision making ki right how much sale how much profit so there will be transparency there will be some checks and balances and these documents will be available in the public domain so they might be held to account ki why there is so much of difference compared to previous year it was not possible earlier see even though there are checks and balances in the form of cag audit but still if it is widened then they are also becoming becoming more alert ek jo auditor hota hai usko pata hai ki ye statement stock exchange mein nahi jayegi to wo bhi itne acche se audit nahi karenge aur unko pata hai ki stock exchange mein jayega to wo bhi acche se audit karenge because they are also accountable ki ye kyon ho gaya so every stakeholder start working in a better manner bharat 22 to promote the retail investors through index based funds right etf so basically what is this etf basically hoga kya ki there will be some fund suppose this is a general public so general public is depositing depositing its money in the bharat 22 bharat 22 is a kind of fund ye aapka fund ho gaya and from this fund the money money will be invested into the psu shares this fund will purchase the shares of the psu clear this fund will issue will purchase the shares of the psu so this is bharat 22 isse kya hoga through this the retail investors participation will increase in the public sector jo hamara objective tha right 
this is not important to you not important now this is important this is the major policy which is being followed now this you should know and please write it down this is a policy which is being followed right now policy on strategic disinvestment this came last year budget 2122 policy on strategic disinvestment what is this policy uh the same policy which we are discussing earlier also that we have to divert the disinvestment proceeds to the social sectors right and not only this but also to infuse private capital technology and best management practices in the central government enterprises and for this we will be covering not only psus but also the banks and the insurance companies like lic so this is the overall objective now for this we will again look into strategic and non strategic sector so now jo humne differentiation kiya tha kab kiya tha humne differentiation स्ट्रेटेजिक एंड नॉन स्ट्रेटेजिक का हाँ 2005 यस सो दैट क्लासिफिकेशन बिकम्स फर्दर अगेन यू नो दे आर हैविंग दिस क्लासिफिकेशन स्ट्रेटेजिक सेक्टर में देर विल बी बेयर मिनिमम प्रेजेंस ऑफ पब्लिक सेक्टर एंटरप्राइजेस एंड रिमेनिंग टू बी प्राइवेटाइज्ड और मर्ज और सब्सिडराइज नाउ दिस इज बिट डिफरेंट ये डिफरेंट कैसे है अल्टर दे वर से that we will not touch the companies in the strategic sector now they are saying suppose we take up a sector like power sector so either they will like they, they will have only one company mostly in one sector not multiple company right so they will try to have only one company for one sector and rest of the companies either they will be merged or privatized or subsidized example dijiye in the oil and gas sector bpcl it was privatized right because there are other companies like ioc hpcl which are working and maybe sooner or later they will be merged or one of them will be privatized similarly in the power power sector in the power finance there are two companies pfc and rec rec so this rec has been put under the pfc subsidization okay in the power sector only there was one company Sat satluj vidyut nigam limited svnl it has been put under ntpc so they are restructuring instead of multiple companies they are converting either into one company by merging or by privatizing the extra companies or by putting the small companies under the big companies right ab mujhe bataiye ek ek just tell me one thing this is a government company pfc and this is another government company rec 
now rec has been made the subsidiary of the tft now tell me in this transaction what is the financial implication in the in the form of money government ko kya milega kisse paisa milega so basically in this transaction what is happening is pfc is buying rec that means pfc is paying to whom government so government is re realizing the money government is selling the money but it is not going to the private sector did you get this point normally jab bhi hum baat karte hain disinvestment ki hame lagta hai ki private sector ko humne bech diya but this is not the case always in this case even if there is disinvestment of rec but it is not going into the hand of pfc sorry it is not going into the hand of private sector it is being put under the pfc so it is not being transferred to the private sector right so this is also happening nowadays so multiple permutation combinations are happening so aap aapko abhi tak kya sunna hai usme right so abhi hum samajhte hain normal just ignore this point right suppose uh, vsnl is a company so government is selling its shares from vsnl to private company so who will get the money government will get the money central government and who who pays the money private company pays the money so this is traditional way of disinvestment that private private sector is paying the money to the government traditionally private sector se government ke paas paisa jata hai disinvestment mein but in but in this new kind of transaction who is buying pfc right so who who pays the money pfc pays the money so yahan pe private company pays the money here pfc pays the money pays to whom to the government so there is no involvement of the private sector here theek hai so this is how it is different earlier they were saying in the strategy sector we will not touch anything jaisa hai waisa hi rahega ab hum keh rahe hain usko bhi restructure karna hai even if it is profit profitable compared to 2004 in 2004 they were saying not touch profitable companies usko touch nahi karenge now they are saying irrespective of profit making B, uh, bpcl highly profit making so wo keh rahe hain ki profit making is not the criteria it's not ki hum log jo loss making hai usko hum privatize karenge even if it is profit making but why should we do the business which is not required to be done by us it's not about crisis tab crisis ke samay pe humne kiya tha sick companies ko hum bachane mein lage hue the profitable ko hum touch nahi kar rahe the but ab wo 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 logic wo criteria ab valid nahi hai are you getting this so in the sectors like atomic energy space and defense transport and telecom power petroleum coal and other minerals banking insurance and financial these are the major sectors jisko hum bolte hain strategic sector aap isko likh bhi sakte hain these are the strategic sector in sabhi sectors mein there will be one psu mostly they will not be having multiple psus they will remain minimal but in other areas ya to privatize karenge ya fir close karenge नॉन स्ट्रेटेजिक में तो रहना ही नहीं है एग्जांपल दीजिए नीलांचल इस्पात पवन हंस क्या कंपनीज का है हा? हेलीकॉप्टर पवन हंस क्या प्रोवाइड करता है हेलीकॉप्टर सर्विसेज द 
these are some of the facts not important for you just for this sake of completion mai usko dikha raha hu like ye jo strategic sale of idbi bpcl shipping corporation container corporation nilanchal spark pavan hans air india ye sab hua hai aapka ho raha hai ya fir some companies are being in the process ip of lic insurance company ka ip ho raha hai not sale but ip only what is the sale what is the difference between sale and ipo difference between privatization and uh, ipo yes ipo is basically the government the the company is being listed on the stock exchange right so ipo might result into privatization also and might not right and similarly privatization might result into ipo or may not ye bhi ho gaya aapka targets and all not important theek hai ye sab aapko dekhne ki zarurat nahi hai ha ye companies aapke sab proposed hain ipo ke liye मल्टीपल कंपनीज छोटी छोटी कंपनीज हैं आपने इनके नाम भी नहीं सुने होंगे ठीक है देख लीजिए आई आर सी टी सी का ऑलरेडी हो चुका है जैसे ये फे, काफ़ी फेमस कंपनी है बाकी सब इतनी फेमस कंपनीज नहीं है और आपको नाम भी याद रखने की जरूरत नहीं है राइट इसलिए मैं बोलता हूँ कि ये पी पी टी तो सब आपको सेंस ऑफ कंप्लीशन के लिए है बट आपको नोट्स बनाने चाहिए नोट्स के अंदर ये सब लिखने की आपको जरूरत नहीं है एल आई सी ये आपका रिसेंटली था Air India, Concorde, Air India and all. Now comes the important part. This is important. Arguments for disinvestment. ये आपके लिए important है. Exam के अंदर ये आपको important रहेगा. So there is one person seven six four A D eight B zero seven. Please rename rename yourself. what is your good name please type in the chat box arguments for disinvestment okay see disinvestment ka argument kya hai sabse pehle why we established psus because we didn't have any choice rather private sector was very weak so we didn't have any choice except giving the Role to the public sector, so that's no longer the case. This is a very simple logic. ठीक है. As per the changing need, we should keep changing the decision. We should not be nostalgic, and we should not be either emotionally attached too much. कि इन्होंने ही हमें crisis में बचाया था, इनको कैसे छोड़ दें? अगर नहीं छोड़ोगे तो वो भी crisis में लेके आ जाएंगे आपको. ठीक है. So at the time of 1947, we didn't have the any investment base. The initial rationale of growth of PSU is no longer valid. We already have a strong industrial base, wider market, and the good private sector. Please write this. This is very simple logic. So we are linking with the history. That why it is not important now, versus why it was important earlier. so this is the macro picture you know we have to look at the macro picture this thing we know poor performance of psu right and here we can mention some facts which we have already discussed earlier also like one third psus were loss making just one fact is sufficient even though i have given multiple facts but just one fact is sufficient one third of the psus were loss making right like air india every year bsnl mtnl every year they were giving the losses is 
if we see at the macro level it is just change in the portfolio what is the meaning of this see government is uh, having its property government's property or assets they are in the form of say psus now we are selling psus and we are transferring this property into infrastructure social infrastructure so it is just that we are changing the type of property it's not that we are gifting it free of cost to the private sector we are taking the money from them and utilizing it other at other place so from the perspective of government it is just change in the nature of asset it is not it is not that we are wasting that money are you, can you see that so it is just change in the portfolio isko bolte hain it is just change in the portfolio of assets by the owner it means selling the good investment to buy more promising assets abhi to aise hi karte hain na if we have some plot some land and we are getting some good amount of sale value so we will sell from there and we will invest at a better place jahan pe hame future mein return mil sake so now we are in the demographic de we are in the demographic uh, explosion phase where we are having good amount of demographic opportunity so we should invest into health education sanitation housing skill development rather than the business because business they will gather the capital from foreign companies but foreign companies will not come and do the hospital and so school work which is the responsibility of the government social security assets hai na current principle is that investment should be changed should be changed in favor of high social returns which i told abhi hamare paas mein kya hai we have demographic opportunity so historically also it is not required and from the current perspective also it is highly required to disinvest public management is may never be able to revive some of the sectors and their financial operational health public management ab le lijiye kai sectors mein hai it was never able to improve beyond a logic and we should be guided by the economic logic rather than guided by the nostalgia these are the arguments given in the book in uh, some books actually some very good books not from newspaper or current affairs have you noted down ho gaya arguments against disinvestment so this is again the opposite logic that when we were in difficult situation psus rescued us and now the profit which is being made by the private sector that is at the cost of public money like you will find the opposite logic looking very appealing also Again, the same uh, 
same point in, in different words the tsus they were built by using taxpayers money in those areas where tax where private sector was not ready due to high initial risk and now when it is profitable when it is profitable why should we transfer it initial high risk was taken by the public sector and now the profit is being reaped by the private sector but there is a counter logic or a counter uh, point also that if we are transferring to the private sector we are taking the money from them for the profit also because the valuation is based upon the profitability if a company is loss making the valuation will be less if the company is profitable the valuation will be more again it's not that we are selling them free of cost see as a upsc aspirant you have to write both sides you have to understand both sides because tomorrow when you become district magistrate you can be representing any political party so you should know every dimension and take the decision on the non political constitutional values yes please initially when we were in difficult situation tss were see myth uh, if you see from one perspective it might be myth but the person who is saying for them it is not a myth bhagwan ram the ya nahi the ye ek myth bhi ho sakta hai one party one person one side of the people are saying it is a myth and one side of the party is saying it is not myth it is reality so we should not we should not say it is myth rather we should say it is one of the argument against disinvestment we have to take it literally like an argument only right like this is important for you to understand because in interview if you take any point lightly it will be showing your biased attitude you have to be equally sensitive to both the dimensions both the stakeholders none of the stakeholder can be taken lightly for you both are equally important and then you can say yes the current policy is better because now we should not look into the earlier argument we are not saying that uh, that is we are not invalidating we are not invalidating that in argu uh, that argument but what we are doing we are picking up that alternative which is going to provide us a good future because just by talking about the future past we might we might be uh getting stuck in the past rather than building the future so we have to operate from the present and future and definitely keep in mind the past also without making it a obstacle for us to grow right so agar aap exam mein upsc mein fail ho rahe hain to don't say ki sir main bcom mein topper tha graduation mein topper tha wo the aap tab the abhi ki baat karo na abhi aapko kaam karna hai right so पहले क्या हुआ उसको भूल जाइए वर्क ऑन टुडे एंड द फ्यूचर बिकॉज रिजल्ट विल बी बेस्ड अपॉन योर टूडेज वर्क एंड द फ्यूचर वर्क नॉट बेस्ड अपॉन हु आर यू इन द पास्ट राइट लैक ऑफ क्लैरिटी इन वैल्यूएशन ऑफ पी एस यूज एसेट्स एंड द एबसेंट ऑफ क्लियर कट पॉलिसी ये दिस इज ए वेरी वैलिड ऑक्यूमेंट वेरी रैशनल ऑर्ग्यूमेंट lack of clarity in the valuation of psu assets and the absence of clear cut policy they can promote the chronic capitalism we are saying that we are not selling them free but they can be subjectivity in the valuation so that can promote the chronic capitalism what is the meaning of chronic capitalism nexus unholy nexus between the politicians bureaucrats and industrialists resulting into favoritism
social objectives like formal jobs need based goods providing level playing field etc can be compromised so these are also social objectives formalization of jobs like if we are transferring the psus uh, to the private sector then it can result into informalization of jobs need based goods the social goods providing level playing field because it might result into inequality it might result into monopoly right disinvestment is not going to benefit enterprise itself this is most important very good point so basically if we are selling rec shares is the money being received by the rec if we are transferring the rec shares is rec receiving the money no so there is no direct benefit to the company itself आपको ऐसे आर्ग्यूमेंट कहीं मिलेंगे नहीं मोस्ट ऑफ द आर्ग्यूमेंट आर्ट एट वेरी वेरी पेरिफरल लेवल पोलिटिकल होते हैं आप डिबेट सुनेंगे किसी न्यूज चैनल में तो <laughs> नहीं मिलेंगे आपको ऐसे पॉइंट एंड दिस इज ऑल्सो दिस वॉज द केस अर्लियर बट नॉट नाउ दैट बिकॉज ऑफ द पुअर मार्केट कंडीशन द वेरी लो वैल्यूएशन वॉज देयर the comp like if you see air india for many years government was, was fighting to sell it to the right person so companies were not ready it was a it was not easy work may result into misutilization of natural resources like oil and gas power coal so if they are put into private sector as a bureaucrat you have to be sensitive equally sensitive to all the dimensions without being emotionally emotionally attached to any dimension even if you are at individual level but when you are in office then you have to detach yourself at any level if you even if you are personally attached but when you are sitting in the office you are taking decision you cannot bring your personal to the office at any cost then you will be transferred back to some bad department <laughs> you will not never be given the important position suggestions as per the niti ayog strategic disinvestment should be done only on those areas where private sector is sufficiently present so there is so that there is sufficient competitiveness and the chances of monopoly are less the chances of monopoly are less then disinvestment policy it it should be decided from case to case basis rather than one shoe fits all approach because every disinvestment is a very major decision so the terms and conditions of valuation how to protect the social interest all these things we can decide based upon the case to case basis maintain a judicial balance between labor welfare because definitely some kind of labor welfare social security social agenda and economic logic there should be a balance
online are you writing it down everyone okay very good ऐसा लगता है ना कि ऑनलाइन ऑफलाइन दोनों साथ में बैठे हुए हैं ना कि उसे ऑनलाइन आपको पता चलता है कभी कि आप ऑनलाइन पढ़ रहे हैं आपको फील होता है कभी ऐसा डू यू फील सम डिस्क्रिमिनेशन नो सॉरी कहां पे होता है डिस्क्रिमिनेट क्या बोला आपने खुशबू टेक्नोलॉजिकल डिस्क्रिमिनेशन समझा नहीं आपकी बात में अरे नेटवर्क नहीं आ रहा है कैमरा काम नहीं कर रहा है वो डिस्क्रिमिनेशन है <laughs> अब इतना तो करना ही पड़ेगा ऑफलाइन वाले लोग या तो दिल्ली में रह रहे हैं इतना महंगा खर्चा करके या तो फिर ट्रेवल कर रहे हैं दिल्ली के बाहर से आकर के तो आपको कम से कम अपना कनेक्शन तो दुरुस्त रखना होगा <laughs> कैमरा तो अच्छा करना होगा आपको अपना सो जुडिशियल बैलेंस हैज टू बी मेंटेन रेगुलेटरी अथॉरिटी कैन बी देयर सजेशंस में लोग क्या करते हैं जो कमियां होती हैं उसी को रिपीट कर देते हैं यू शुड ट्राई टू फाइंड सम न्यू सजेशंस even if you have three suggestions but it should be new and we should not wait for the revival of sick psu rather we should actively get the maximum price that means even we should consider selling the sick psu without thinking that first they should be revived and then after we will sell suggestions uh out of this this is good one the thinking is government has no business to be in business except strategic areas and should should shift its focus on the social indicator this this point last of the points are not important government has no business to be in business simple conclusion we should focus on the social indicators because we also have the obligation under the sdg sustainable development goals and psus are the necessity in the areas where government has the natural monopoly railway metro and or in sensitive areas satellite nuclear power and where the private sector has is not keen to invest like public health and rural area this can be your concluding point that psus the government might continue in two type of areas which are very important and secondly where 
private sector is not keen to invest these are the concluding lines those are the important areas railways ke liye railways railways necessity hai because uh, most of the uh, people they travel through railway abhi hum kar bhi rahe privatize puri tarah se nahi kar sakte iske operations ko hum privatize kar rahe hain some of the operations trains ha we are privatizing but overall control will be in the hand of uh, government only because usko privatize karna mushkil hai iske liye because lot of people are traveling through it's a uh, very very important uh, important uh, sector where government has to be there long travel ke liye even short travel ke liye transportation of goods ke liye bhi चलिए ट्रांसपोर्टेशन गुड्स तो मान सकते हैं कि चलिए तो प्राइवेट सेक्टर कर भी सकता है बट जो सोशल पर्सपेक्टिव है एक गरीब आदमी के लिए आज के समय में सबसे जो अफोर्डेबल सबसे रिलायबल एक है वो है रेलवे शुरू से ये रहा है लॉन्ग ट्रेवल के लिए माइग्रेशन के लिए डिस्ट्रेस माइग्रेशन के लिए हर हर जगह जो है आपका रेलवे एक ऐसी चीज़ रही है जिसको हम लोग नहीं कर सकते finally we can say public and private they should not be completely divorced that means they should not be looked into from the perspective that they are opposite to each other they should be looked into from the perspective that they are complementary right they are complementary for example the railway track they can be state owned but the train with the private sector can be operated jo abhi ho bhi raha hai private trains have start ho chuki hain hai na kaun si train hai ha tejas so public and private sector they should not be looked upon from opposite dimensions rather as a complementary partners to each other so this was about the disinvestment now the second topic the inter related topic is privatization privatization is basically expansion of the disinvestment only so in the privatization we have already discussed before independence status of uh, you know companies then at the time of independence socialistic pattern state led capitalism marlon obis model right public enterprises objective of psus you can see from here infrastructure capital formation employment balance regional growth we have already seen the logic behind the psus right issues on psu we have already seen now this is important meaning of privatization right migrating something from the public sector to the private sector it is complete migration from the public to the private sector
now disinvestment versus privatization disinvestment versus privatization why should we go to the privatization not disinvestment why is not disinvestment sufficient because in most of the disinvestments the management control do not change and unless there is change in the management control the end objective might not be realized right so problem in the disinvestment is that it does not ensure a change in the management of the enterprise it opens the company to the public scrutiny right it ensures more accountability but unless it's, it is a strategic disinvestment or privatization the management control do not change even in the strategic dis disinvestment unless there is 100% transfer there is government interference right because jo tradition raha hai koi company government company rahi hai to tradition that culture that psychology will continue till the time government is having any stakeholdership even if government is having 30% ownership still there will be the same mentality of the employees management and from the public will also look it from the perspective of that it is a government company right so disinvestment is a second best alternative that yields revenue for the center but do not improve the condition of the enterprise so to improve the condition of the enterprise at, as a whole we might consider privatization it's a very fine line okay and it is a debatable point also debatable hai definitely now what is the meaning of privatization if you look at from the perspective of broad picture broad picture ab dekhenge to privatization basically means bringing the private capital into the economy it can be domestic or it can be from the foreign so if we are transferring the public asset into the private sector what we are doing essentially is we are bringing more and more private capital and we are freeing up the public capital for the public use right so it is also the process of capital formation which is not otherwise possible ab koi cheez koi bhi company agar hum usko sell nahi karenge wo government ke paas hi rahegi so the private company the private capital will not come and now when we are talking about wealth creation in the economic survey and we are talking about increasing public participation or increasing profit maximization for the prosperity we have to bring the pri private investment right so the key challenge before the country is to enhance gross capital formation and the private sector should come in the revenue generating stream so we have to increase the gross capital formation it will increase the gross capital formation number 2 it will enhance the total factor productivity that means it will enhance the efficiency this is a synonym total factor productivity you can use this in your uh, in your arguments total factor productivity commercial principles faster decision making improving efficiency and minimizing the administrative cost and we have seen the sectors like it pharma telecom banking they are working on the competitive good merit rather than the political proximity they are having global goodwill and they are having good amount of export especially it and pharma so these are the successful example successful example of the privatization right so number 1 increase gross capital formation number 2 maximum total factor productivity number 3 to realize the commercial principles like faster decision making and number 4 for uh, for uh, replicating the successful models of it pharma telecom which are working increasing export and increasing the global goodwill likh rahe hain aap log isko mind mein banana hai aapko next class se pehle advantages of privatization 
more options for population in terms of goods and services fdi aayega this is very important from the citizen perspective it increases the choices available and it increases the foreign investment right and it provides the accountability to the stakeholders now how is the privatization experience ignore the first one this is outdated the second one we if we see the company like hindustan zinc it is a case study hindustan zinc it was sold for 769 cr in 2002 after 2000 after 20 years you know how how much is the value like 45% sale hua tha 769 cr mein abhi government ke paas mein 30% stake hai uski value hai 20000 cr so government has stake holdership in the hindustan zinc 30% hai तो यानी कि 45 परसेंट का जो इसका वैल्यू है वो कितना हुआ होगा 30,000 सीआर हो गया इसका वैल्यू दैट्स वेरी बिग अमाउंट सो बिकॉज ऑफ द चेंज इन द प्राइवेट बिकॉज ऑफ द चेंज इन चेंज इन द मैनेजमेंट दिस वैल्यूएशन हैज इंक्रीज हिंदुस्तान जिंक राइट देन सब्सिडी लॉसेस इन द ऑयल एंड गैस कंपनीज बिकॉज ऑफ दिस दे आर ऑल्सो लुकिंग टू प्राइवेटाइज now this policy we have discussed two fold classification of sectors strategic and non strategic in the strategic sector we will be privatizing or merging or subsidizing and in the non non strategic we will be either closing or selling right now criticism of privatization you can uh, write some points kuch hum logo ne likhe hain disinvestment mein aur kuch hum yahan pe specifically likh sakte hain right we can interchange the points also number 1 the sale of family silver sale of family silver then third uh, this fourth point is here relevant like we have to see the weaknesses of the private sector also that even in the private sector there are problems not every private company is equally efficient like king fisher then on the one hand we are saying that privatization will increase the choice and the quality but on the other hand it is quite possible that for their profit maximization they might they might result into poor quality of product right using capital intensive technique rather than labor intensive technique inflation and job security issue and there is lack of transparency corporate governance example satyam crisis 2006 so even private companies they are not free from the lack of transparency issue in in government companies there is public auditor government auditor cag but in private companies it is a private auditor private ca firm who are subject to easily nexus or manipulation and chronic capitalism that we have seen right finally in the uh, this objective of psus you can use this in the psu reforms that what should be the objective of psus now first of all reducing import bill of uh, india please write the future objectives of psus should be the future objectives of psus should be the india's import bill by uh, by
developing indigenous product like tejas by developing indigenous products like tejas number 2 research and development high research and development number 3 utilizing their csr fund on the at the right place utilizing the CR csr fund right then uh, the second last timely closure of sick psus timely closure of sick psus last one the monetize the monetization of ideal assets of the psus psus ki kafi assets hoti hain prime locations pe hoti hain so we can monetize them monetize do not mean that we have to waste the fund rather we can utilize that fund to improve the company itself because this is different from disinvestment in this case monetization here means the company itself is selling its land extra land and getting that money and using the in the business itself so this is different from the disinvestment so this thing you can write in the psu uh, question psu ka jo question hoga usme aap likh sakte hain isko right and these are the concluding lines that we have also used in the uh, disinvestment that public and the private sector they are the like two eyes of the indian economy traveling on one i will only give short term benefits so the government should continue to focus on public sector organizations and regulate the private entities else there can be a risk of income inequality so we have to focus on regulation of the private sector and we have to utilize best of both so even though we are privatizing but at the same time we should keep regulating the private sector through independent regulators any question from discussion so far